Okay. So this is the opposite of expansion. And so what we're doing is we're looking for a common factor amongst all of our terms. We're going to pull that out the front. So here, what we need to do is first we need to make a common factor. Now, what we should be recognizing is our common factor is going to be 3 to the x. And we can express this as 3 to the x times 3 to the x. Okay, just this term here. Because if we're using index laws, they have the same base, which means we can add those powers and go back that way. Okay? So we're sort of doing reverse index laws here. We're, we're, we're splitting it into these two terms. And then we've got this lonely 3 to the x hanging over here by itself. And so then we're looking along. Here's one term. Here's another term. And what is common to both of them? 3 to the x. So we're going to pull that out the front. And what are we left with in brackets? Well, we can only pull one of them out the front. So that means we've still got a 3 to the x hanging here. And if we pull that out the front, we're just going to have a 1 there. Okay? And the reason you know you've got it right is because if we were to expand that, we would get exactly what we have here. Okay, so that's the gist of what we're doing. Let's move on to B. Pretty similar. Um, we can separate this into 5 to the x times 5 to the 1. Okay? What's common? 5 to the x. It's common there and there, so let's pull that out the front. And we're left with in brackets. We're going to have 5 to the power of 1, which is just 5, so we can just write it as 5. Plus, and we've pulled 5 to the x out, so there we've got 1. Okay? And so 5 plus 1 is 6, so what we've got is 5 to the x in brackets 6. And the technically correct way of writing this is that we've got 6 lots of 5 to the x. Okay, so what are we doing? We split the index law here. We recognise 5 to the x is common to this term and this term. We pull it out the front and then we simplify them. Okay, let's move on to C. Now with the with subsequent ones, we're going to be using some of these expansion laws. Um, so we've got perfect square expansions and we've got difference of two squares, this one here. So what we're going to recognise is what we've actually got here. That's 2 to the x squared take away 9 squared. It follows the same form as what we've got here. a squared take b squared. Hang on. a squared take b squared. That's what we've got here. Which means once we recognise it's written like that, we can jump straight from there to there. So we're going to simplify this to be 2 to the x take 9 times 2 to the x plus 9. All right? So we've jumped from there to there. Any questions about that one? We do learn about difference of two squares. I think we've just done quadratics. So let's just grab this for a job. Hello, down this bridge. Uh, yes, yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's C, so D, okay. So here, th these are sort of your last ones of question seven, and they do get a bit hard here. Uh, I've, I've, I've worked out a little, little hack that's gonna help you um, solve these out. So what we wanna recognize, um, now, excuse me, that should say 16 to the power of X, okay? What we wanna recognize is here we've got four to the X squared, and we've got take away 15 times 4 to the x plus 36. Now what we're going to do is we're going to, this is our variable, 4 to the x. And we're going to, we're going to just write, let a equal 4 to the x. And then we're going to rewrite what we've got. We're going to have a squared, take 15a plus 36. And now it is so much easier for us to factorise, okay? It does look quite confusing when we've got these powers and what's going on. But something like that, we, you've learned how to solve that, okay? Cross product method, that's a quadratic, we can factorise that. And so if we are going to factorise this, we're looking for two numbers that multiply together to give us 36. And when we add them together, we get negative 15. Great. 12 is great. Nice. Minus 12 and minus 3. So that means this is what it factorises to be, a take 12 and a take 3, and then we're just going to substitute that a back in. 
Remember, we defined A, we described it up here. A is 4 to the x. So we've got 4 to the x take 12 and 4 to the x take 3. So that's how I recommend doing those ones. Um, so that skill, that's sort of assumed knowledge. You've done that in the other maths. Uh, but what we're doing is we're describing it in a way that's uh, comprehensive to us, comprehensible to us. Okay. Now, again, if you were to expand that, this is what you'd get. Okay. So we're doing the opposite of the expansion. Last one's pretty similar. Um, what we've got here, we've got 5 to the x squared. And here, 5 to the x plus 1, we can split into 5 to the 1 times 5 to the x. Okay? Then, again, let's dictate A. Let's say let A equal 5 to the x. So this time we're going to have A squared take 5A plus 6. Alright, A is 5 to the x, so A squared take 5 lots of A plus 6. And then again, we're trying to factorise this one. So two numbers, multiply together to give us 6, add them together to get minus 5, minus 3, and minus 2. And then we'll sub the A back in. Okay, and again, if we were to expand that, we're going to get what we've got up here. Cool. So that's factorization. So let's give that a bit of a crack. Um, we can probably spend some time doing that tomorrow as well.